afternoon uh, members of the jury and uh, ladies and gentlemen we have been talking about uh, all the terrestrial things and now i'm going to talk about something of the ocean i come from the national institute of oceanography it is part of the csir lab and i'm going to talk about a system which we have developed which is called a seabed resident event driven profiling system now what was the motivation now if you know that uh, uh, monsoon is one of the most important environmental aspects that needs special attention because many of this many of the people are dependent on their livelihood on the monsoons now ocean and land a couple system as much as we need to observe the land parameters we have to also observe the ocean parameters to be able to tell the progress of monsoon <coughs> and 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 the and the evolution now what happens is during the monsoons in the sea the seas are rough and even if you go with a large ship you can go with a large ship the ship will be rolling and uh, pitching but it is difficult to deploy instrumentation from the ship now this is uh, if you see this picture here the number of ships going out in the monsoons is much lesser and that is because of the extreme wind condition and the weather condition now what happens is just as the 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 monsoon starts in the ocean it starts with a giant sea breeze which blows from the central indian ocean to the indian peninsula and this wind creates a churning effect of the arabian sea i'm talking of the southwest monsoon and brings water from as deep as 1000 meters to the coastal region of up to 200 meters and this water which comes down is nutrient rich and it fertilizes the coastal waters so that is just like how we have agriculture on land this is a process where the coastal waters get fertilized and because of that you have prolif proliferation of plant life and the animal life and therefore the fish now these things with the satellites you can get a synoptic view but you need to do continuous measurements of the water column and as i said it is difficult uh, to go out with the ship so you need some systems which can sit on the seabed which is much calmer and then be released and it will measure the water column properties now what we at present we don't have such effective systems for the coastal waters we have systems for deep seas which are argos and uh, gliders which do not work in the coastal waters they they work at greater depths we have systems which are mood system now if you see if this is the water and if this is the seabed and that is a sea surface people put systems where the measurements are made at discrete points so you have you don't have a continuous measurement now this system will provide uh, you with continuous uh, providers with continuous measurements along the water column again the the, the research vessel uh, ship time is very expensive it's of the order of 10 lakhs per day and uh, the other things which you can do is you can profile from the surface but you can do it in fair weather when the sea is calm but in the monsoons it's practically impossible even in the fair weather it is not advisable to do from the surface because again you have things like biofouling the things uh, other organisms get get attached to that and uh, there are issues of functionality so this was the motivation uh, for us so we went about uh, designing this and uh, we have an indian patent for this now this system has got two parts it's an autonomous underwater profiling system it has two parts you see here this is the stationary part and this is the movable part 
this part will be at the C bed and the other part is attached to this using a tether. Now this tether or a rope is a non-conductor, it's a Kevlar rope, but these two units are connected using something called the acoustic modem. In the terrestrial we have the Wi-Fi, in the ocean the Wi-Fi will not work, so only the acoustic uh, communication and acoustic waves can be used, even though it's much slower, it, it is uh, effective. Now we have sensors on this unit which can address the environmental monitoring issues and if you see here this system has got a winch unit, battery powered electronics and the function of this is to release the profiler and as the profiler goes up it will take continuous measurement almost two readings in a meter and then once it reaches surface the winch stops winding out the wire and after that it brings it back. All throughout the, the ascent of the profiler, the profiler sends data at a certain interval, not continuously to the seabed unit for safekeeping. So it is, we have built that redundancy into the system. Now let us see what is uniqueness in the system. There are many systems all around the world, but they do not have this feature of acoustic communication. There are systems which uh, uh, are only one unit which goes up and down. Now what happens is, this is very important, even though, even though this is a marginal overhead of say 22% over the power, it is uh, very important because uh, these things are autonomous, they are left in the sea and as I told you these two units are connected by tether. By chance and it is a possibility, you have a fish bite and the tether gets broken, then you will not lose the whole effort. What is important here is the data is more important. So you will have the, uh, the data backed up on the base unit. So this is one thing we built into the system which is not available with most of the system. Then once we built this up, we found that uh, acoustic modem is actually a power guzzler. If you do not use it effectively, you have to have very smart algorithms for power saving. Not only we switch off all the sensors, the sensors and the electronics is on only during profiling. Rest of the time it is in a, in a sleep mode and again when we are profiling, we do not send data continuously, we send at 4 or 5 uh, seconds interval. So all these things are built in to conserve power because the batteries which we are using here have to be very safe and uh, the more batteries you add, it adds to the cost of the system. Again I told you data redundancy is very important, in case of an accidental loss, the profiler will get separated from the base unit, the profiler will get drifted in the ocean and it will transmit its location and the, the even though if we do not find the profiler, the data will be available in the base unit. Now we have a, a feature time profiles, we have a feature event profile and we have a feature force profile. Time profile is you can program the unit, pre-program the unit to do dives at a certain time. For example, you want to take, uh, you want to release the profiler of 12 o'clock in the noon, we can set it 12 o'clock in the night. So, so this time, depending on the designated time, it will release, it will take the measurement, come up and come back to the home position. Now the force profile is possible because of the acoustic modem and if you have a third unit, I will show you the configuration, third unit on the ship, you can send a command to the base unit to do a force profile, provided you reach there in the fair weather. If it is a rough weather, then it is not advisable to go to there. And then again, it is suitable for coastal waters. Most of the technologies are not suitable. Gliders and uh, the floats are running on the buoyancy engines 
and uh, they have a very large bandwidth and uh, shallow waters like 200 meters they could crash down into the seabed now this is the system configuration you see here this is uh, it is deployed at 150 meters and uh, the the water depth was 200 you you, you see this uh, system here and then uh, uh, the the other part is the seabed unit and from the ship you can talk to the seabed unit and also to the profiling unit so before you retrieve you deploy the systems and we go from there it is completely autonomous by chance you happen to pass that site you can uh, use this third you can use this USBL from the ship or a modem you can talk to the system you can download the data also before you retrieve the whole system out out you can download the data and then give a release command so here is the block diagram of the electronics you have these two systems the base unit and the profiler and they are acoustically connected now the challenge was this is a system the the, the base unit is about uh, two meters high <coughs> and then you have the profiler which is about another one meter so three and three meters the whole thing you put in water it will be you need a three meter so you need a long tank and uh, we did not have this tank there are uh, uh, deeper waters like dams but then again we have to be very confident of testing it so what we did is from the beginning we broke this project out into different pieces we saw what is the core of the project the first part was the winch system we made sure we understood the winch system thoroughly and uh, that was tested standalone in the lab the second thing is the acoustic communication the acoustic communication again was tested in in the dam with all the three units and simulation now uh, after that after the whole system was checked in the lab we have something called hardware in loop where some of the things are simulated some of the things are connected in loop we did this test in our uh, uh, this is the tank which we have in an IO where all the systems are placed here the winch unit is down and the profiler is simulated by a 10 kg weight because the upward force of the profiler is 10 kg so this system integrity test was done and we found that uh, all the systems were working you have the profiler electronics here you have, this is simulated and then you have the ship model after this was done we were confident we went on the ship for this test and the first deployment was at 26 meters now this was done in March this year you can see this whole thing getting lifted you have the profiler you have the this in the whole inverted form maybe not a good one but uh, uh, this was the first uh, uh, time we deployed it and uh, the the profiler is shown here after it was deployed the divers went at 26 meters and took the photograph and uh, this shows the system ready for profiling so we kept the system for three days two profiles a day so after that was done we were very happy it was uh, uh, people were happy with us and they said why don't you now put it for 30 days because we have designed it actually for three months now now let's do it for 30 days so we prepared for 30 days and uh, on the 11th of April we deployed it and this time we did it much better and if you see here this was done from the back of the ship you see here the the profiler and the seabed is lifted up then lowered in the sea now once this in the sea it will float this whole system floats now you need an anchor to take it down so, so we have all these things are the anchor components along with a release device because after the after the mission is over you have to send a release command and the whole thing comes up so it goes in the clockwise fashion so once it is in the water we just start the propeller give a wash it goes away and finally we lower the weights and the whole system with gravity goes down and settles at the seabed 
So after that is done, you can give a forced profile to check whether the system is functioning. And then it was left for a month. And after, after a month, we uh, went and removed it. So in all, we got 67 time profile. A profile means when the time comes, it will release, it will go up. As it is going up, it will record the data, come up, and then comes down. Now, once it, when it is coming down, about 10 to 12 meters, we switch off everything to conserve the power. And uh, also, date, there was, uh, data was backed up on the base unit. So this is, after we, this, this is the plots. There were CTD, which is called conductivity, temperature, and salinity. Conductivity, temperature. From conductivity, we get the salinity, very important. For to get the density of waters. Using this, you can know the movement of waters. And then the chlorophyll tells about the, the health of the ecosystem. It is like it is the plant life in the water. Very important parameter. Now, if you see here, satellites give a synoptic view. But uh, there is a feature here, which if you, if, if you see here, you have a chlorophyll patch moving waters. Now, we are stationary at this point. Different waters are passing, and we are capturing the event. And uh, so this is what uh, we achieved. People were very happy. They came running to us. Why don't you put this for us? Why don't you put for three months? Why don't you put this for six months for us? So now, what we, dis what we, do what we are doing is we are preparing for a three months deployment. That is in December to February. And that is to study the winter convention. Con it is 2018. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. It is. <coughs> so we are preparing uh, for this deployment. And uh, there are two monsoon, the southwest and the winds reverse the northeast. Now, during the northeast, the waters from the deep come up on the top. And uh, our scientists from NIO have done uh, this discovery. But they do not know if it's a continuous process or if it happens in spurts, pulses. Now that you can do only if you have a continuous presence. If you go with a ship and make discrete measurements, we may miss out that feature. So we are preparing for this. Then again, uh, uh, the government of India and the INCOIS, they got interested. They, they said, uh, why can't this be linked to the national program where they are going to put these systems? Uh, all around the country and to measure the upwelling signature. Because what happens is when the water comes up, cold water comes to the shore, that is the onset of monsoon. And if we can detect that, and then the quality of water and the ecosystem, we will be able to link it up to the progress of the monsoon. So, and the productivity of, of fish. Again, now after this deployment, we would deploy it for the summer monsoon, which was our objective. We don't, at the moment, have these uh, uh, AI-based machine learning-based techniques to, to, if there is an interesting event, we should be able to change the strategy of uh, sampling on the fly. So we will be working on that. And surely, when the technology is scaled up, it is going to benefit the industry. Thank you. So this was. Yeah, this was when our DG recently visited the lab, the system. Yeah. That is the team, sir. The, the, yeah, one of the industry, this construction involves uh, the mechanical fabrication, electronics, and uh, also it is like the ocean industry. If you have, a, 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 we are targeting people who are dealing with ocean related products. So, so it will help them. system has been designed by us. 
the full system including the the full system the communication between the, the system as such the design but this the community there are other types but this type of system for coastal waters are not available and there are systems for deeper waters there are systems which do not have redundancy now the only we have procured the winch the winch we have procured the 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 whole system as such the the scheme of sampling the acquisition of the sensors the uh, the total system is, is designed by us Yes. Yes. Initially, yeah. Initially, we don't because what happens is oceanography is not something where these units will be manufactured in large number because the the end users are few, and uh, because there are people now who are interested from outside the lab. But what we feel that since it's developed in the lab, let us use this system. along with our nio uh researchers and then move out to the other we have one system now we are building another one so once it's proved for 30 days so then we would go in making a large number of system very thank you very much yeah very much yeah thank you technical but uh, okay we go to the list of that the reasons that Yes. So yes. So <coughs> it is already tested. Now we are in the deployment. Now we are in the deployment phases. Yeah. 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 We have programs with the Indian Ocean Rim countries. So after we have done, we would be collaborating and and yeah. Yeah. At the moment, we have we have not gone global. Yeah. Yeah. But there is a possibility. It is. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. We have we have uh, MOUs with Bangladesh. We have MOUs with Mauritius. So uh, it will be. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, this this is uh, if you have this kind of systems observing, it's much cheaper. I told you the ship costs are very large, and then you cannot have ship continuously monitoring. If you want to study processes, like for example, if it's a spurt so continuous so you need to have something presence there and uh, observe so the, the no it will not affect the marine right but only we have to uh, be care, uh, take care to give notice to the shipping companies that so and so system is is present because when it comes up it will be exposed to the so once this mariners notice is given they avoid try to avoid it this is only thing is when it is put in the coastal too much like 40 meters 50 meters we have to take care of the fishing trawlers and uh, <coughs> many of these people do they they do trawling so you could lose your system so where there you have to keep a watch kit but if you are putting in 100 meters 150 or 200 meters 150 where it is actually required for the to capture the upwelling signature there is not much of risk uh, exclusive economic zone is yeah 